But first, I alluded to the fact that there are some wonderful programs going on at Dominion Chalmers for the community. Things of outreach and humanitarian bent that are just make, make this church a wonderful part of the community. I don't know very much about it, so luckily we have somebody here tonight who can, in fact, tell us more about it. I'd like to call up the operations manager for this church, Mr. Terence McDonald. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Dominion Chalmers. Uh, I'm thrilled. Uh, I love to see a lot of people in this sanctuary, and we're very happy to have you here tonight. Uh, I don't know if you would agree with me, but uh, the performance that we uh, were blessed by in the first part of this uh, concert is absolutely unbelievable. And second half is going to be just as good. You know, there's too many people to thank. Uh, I look at Jackie and, and, and others here, and uh, I know that it's a combined effort, and it's excellent teaching, and it's raw talent, and we're very, very blessed to have you here. Um, Dominion Chalmers is known worldwide for its music. Uh, we're known worldwide for our commitment to the arts, and we're very proud of that. Uh, we're a community that was established in 1826, and we have a very long history in this city. Um, I'm going to share a couple secrets with you, however. Uh, Dominion Chalmers is a church that has been very active in our community. And there are a lot of things that this church does that I think that very few people know. Uh, as I was contemplating uh, what I was going to share with you tonight, uh, I was going over the annual report. And um, I started to jot down some of the local ministries uh, that we as a church support financially and in other ways. Uh, the United Church Women, as an example, uh, they provide financial support to over 17 organizations, all of them local. Uh, Abel Traub Neal is with us tonight. She is the treasurer of the UCW, and uh, she has done an absolute wonderful job over the years in supporting people in need. Uh, George McManus is with us as well. He's our church treasurer. And going through the books, uh, when I looked at uh, local missions fund, uh, the benevolent fund, and, and other sources, uh, I discovered that there are another 15 organizations that we as a church support. Very proud of that. Um, I only have a few minutes. I promised the nice lady in the corner that I'd be five minutes or less. Uh, I'm going to name a couple of those organizations that we do support, and then I'm going to put a little bit of emphasis on four others. Uh, the Refugee Fund, uh, Campus Crusade, Out of the Coal Project, uh, the Ottawa Food Bank, Cornerstone uh, Women's Shelter, uh, Shepherds of Good Hope, Ottawa City Ministries, uh, Salvation Army, the Elizabeth Fry Foundation, and many, many more. Um, there are four ministries that go on inside this church that I think it's important to put emphasis on. Every Tuesday, if you come visit me, uh, you'll be able to observe 100 to 150 homeless men and women who enjoy the Tuesday drop-in. At this drop-in, they receive a warm meal, they get foot care, they get a warm pair of dry socks, a haircut, chiropractic care, and in some cases, they get counseling. A lot of these men and women suffer from a number of ailments, and it's been a real blessing to see how the Ottawa Inner City Ministries uh, volunteer team uh, care for them. Uh, Wednesday evening we partner with the Ottawa Mission uh, for a university program called Discovery University. Uh, Discovery University offers the opportunity to over 70 men and women to receive free university courses and we're very proud of that. Thursday night is especially important for me uh, because we host a kids art program. These are young men and women who come here and they learn how to paint, they learn how to sketch, and uh, they learn how to get their lives together. Young ladies who were pimped out by their fathers at the age of 12, who've been raped and beaten, uh, young men who've lived on the street, and when you get to know their stories, it's heartbreaking. Uh, I've personally witnessed a lot of these young men and women who quit taking drugs. I've seen them get jobs, and I've seen them put their lives together. Uh, come visit me in my office and I'll show you artwork that we've been able to purchase from some of these young ladies. Uh, the last uh, ministry that I do want to share with you is the Christmas dinner. 
Uh, Dominion Chalmers partners with the British Church in Canada and the Salvation Army, Captain Jenny, and we provide a Christmas meal for 300 homeless men and women and children. It's really interesting because we provide uh, live uh, entertainment. One year the Ottawa Children's Choir were kind enough to sing grace. Um, Captain Jenny from the Salvation Army hands out tickets and she provides us with a specific list which allows us to provide really interesting gifts that are gender oriented, which I can't talk anymore, um, that are oriented to gender. So ladies leave here with specific gifts that were designed for them. So all of this to say, though many of you know Dominion Chalmers as a place where great performances come to life, I, I hope that you would leave here tonight remembering Dominion Chalmers as a place where the poor and the oppressed can come and feel safe. So thank you. Just maybe this world is going to make it through after all with everything else that's going on. Let's get the second half started and whereas the first half was instrumental, the second half will be mostly vocal. I'd like to invite a member, a couple of members of the Ottawa Children's Choir's Viva Ensemble to come up and introduce the first piece. Who's going to do that?
my name is Brahma, and this is my first year in the Chamber Choir. The first two pieces we will be singing for you are French songs. A Simon Moana Boule Danse is Quebec composer Donald Patrick Kane's energetic arrangement of this well known Canadian folk song. Chanté by Canadian composer Philippe Duquet was commissioned by Robert Fillion at L'Ecole de la Salle. It has a beautiful lyrical melody and wonderful message about the power of song. Hi, my name is Shelby, and this is also my first year in the Chamber Choir. Our next two selections are a cappella pieces. La Lovia is a folk song melody, folk melody from Ecuador called The Rain. It is traditionally played on the panpipes. In this arrangement by Canadian composer Stephen Hatfield, the voices are imitating this kind of sound and singing the story of rain in the rainforest. Frobisher Bay is by Canadian composer James Gordon. It tells the story of whaling in the far north. The beautiful harmony in each phrase makes it a favorite of many fires, including ours. Hi, my name is Nathan. This is also my first year in the Chamber Choir. The next piece is also by a Canadian composer. Alice by Sarah Cortell is inspired by the story of Alice in Wonderland. It has a lot of changing meters and thematic ideas that add to the craziness of Alice's fantastical journey. In contrast to Alice, it is Katie Moran Bart's blessing. We will end our set with the warm message of these timeless words. Oh. 
the Chandler Choir for two years. It was traditional for traveling music musicians in Ireland to compose music aimed for individuals or families of influence that they met on their journeys. These tributes were known as Planksteaks. Planksteak Kelly was written as a tribute to a young woman who, in her short life, touched the lives of many in her community. Irish legend tells that the Dagda, chief of the Tuatha de Danann, rescued his kidnapped harper by the magical power of his music. Having stolen it to the enemy camp and retrieving the harp, the Dagda entertained the host with three strands of music. First, he played a lament, or a bull track. This was the music of such poignancy and beauty that it made the host weep. Next, he played a gentra, music that was merry and made the company laugh and dance for joy. Finally, he played a lullaby, or sentra, which caused everyone to fall asleep, and he made his escape with the harp. The ability to play these three strains of music became a test by which master musicians were certified. Plank C. Kelly follows the patterns of the Gold Tribe, Gem Tribe, and the Sun Tribe of the legend.
Thank you very much, Ottawa Children's Choir and Stella Borealis. This has been, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm sure you'll agree, a wonderful evening of music. It's almost over, but not yet. We've got one more number for you, and it's a doozy. But before we get to that, some thank yous are in order. First of all, to this ensemble, this wonderful, hardworking, talented ensemble that has worked so hard over so many hours in rehearsals to put together what you heard tonight. Let's have a big hand for this. by using their musical gifts and their leadership to inspire these children to ever higher musical heights. Thanks to Kit Barnum, Caroli Zalati from Stella Borealis, Jackie Hawley, the music director for tonight, and I realized that I was negligent. I've left out one name, the leader of the Viva Ensemble, Alison Prose. Thank you so much. Judith Ginsburg for Stella Borealis, Nick Rogerson for the Ottawa Children's Choir, and Sally Robinson for the Viva Ensemble. <laughs> then there's the parents. The parents who drive their children to and from the rehearsals, take them to performances, sit through the performances, and encourage their children to practice, to keep at it. Thank you, parents, for your hard work. Thank you to our volunteers who worked very hard tonight to make this event a success. And for many other activities, we appreciate your contribution. Thank you to you, our beloved audience, for showing up on a snowy evening when you probably could have done five or six or a hundred other things. We appreciate you coming here tonight to show your support for the children and also to support the wonderful programs going on at Dominion Chalmers. Give yourselves a hand. Most of all, to Terrence McDonald and to the community of Dominion Chalmers, this city is a better place because of your ongo ongoing care and kindness that you extend through these very many important outreach and humanitarian projects. It truly is inspirational. Thank you. is called To Young Canadians. It was written by a gifted Ottawa composer, James Wright. James is a music professor at Carleton University and a great supporter of music in this community. We are honored to have James in our audience tonight. James, would you stand up, please? Right. There you go. Two years ago, the Leading Note Foundation commissioned James to write music to the words of a very special letter. This letter was written by the late Jack Layton to young people in Canada. It was written shortly before his untimely death in 2011. To Young Canadians premiered in 2012 at the Peace Awards ceremony at Ottawa City Hall. Now the performers on that occasion, the performers, were members of orchestra and kids singers as well as support from the Cantiano Girls Choir of Ottawa and the Ottawa Children's Choir. Now, it's a song that is very simple, it's moving, it's inspirational, and our uh, choir master tonight, Jackie Hawley, asked me to look at the video that's on YouTube, and I did, but I, I must tell you honestly that I had a problem with it, because 
Every time I watched it, I tended to run out of Kleenex before the video was over. And I suspect that some of you may have the same problem tonight, so you may want to get the Kleenex ready right now. Now, Jackie uh, took an unexpected move in uh, that she uh, asked me to perform with the ensemble, which I was honored to do, so shall we say that she spared every expense to bring me in tonight? <laughs> Here he is, two young Canadians with music by James Wright, text by Jack Layton, featuring Stella Borealis and the Ottawa Children's Choir.
We'll see you at the reception. <laughs>